I guess the PGA Tour started already, but we we had a uh, we had a uh, our first national look at uh, at some of the tour stars over the weekend at the Heroes Tournament. Scotty Scheffler minus sixteen won it, but I think there was more fascination with somebody that finished tied for sixteenth, Ian, and that was Tiger Woods. How do you look? Yeah, I, th- I think as you know, I think as expected, as the week went on, he looked more and more tired. I think, and he's touched on it. I mean, it's a very difficult thing to walk eighteen holes four days in a row when you have not been doing that. And I know he's been working on his game. We we saw some moments of brilliance there we saw elements of rustiness as he called it uh but he's definitely not the tiger of old we, you can see that in the way he carries himself and that's expected i mean this guy's had more surgeries than anybody that's ever tried to play professional sports so i think that we cannot expect greatness out of tiger woods um we want to see that i think as a fan um and tiger will continue to give us the old chip back positivity and rather than being a little bit more realistic in kind of what's happening around him uh but you know i was wrong last time and i very well not i'm not about to make any predictions <laughs> on tiger woods come back if he'll ever win again win a major because you know you're setting yourself up for failure there but um definitely rusty uh yeah. and as the week went on i think with the heat and walking we saw that wear on him in, in round number four as uh, as it sort of came to an end. What was your take, Richard? Well, um, yeah, I thought this was fantastic. Uh, anytime golf includes Tiger Woods, particularly in this challenging time now within the PGA Tour with what's going on in other places, it's wonderful to see Tiger Woods. Uh, you know, it's remarkable to see him first and foremost, number one, that he's alive and he's gone through all this. And, and now for him and his team and getting the best uh, medical people on his team in the world to try and figure out if he can come back, he's, uh, he's shown that. He's giving a big boost to the PGA Tour in a second way because he's now stating that he can play once a month type of thing, which is like that's a gift in itself. Also, the fact that given the tumultuous time on the PGA Tour, the fact that he's joined the policy board and now the policy board has at least 50% of the votes, whereas before they had less than 50%. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And uh, But uh, golf is a better place with Tiger Woods. Now, I, I think with it, when I look at his golf swing, he's so jacked up yeah. on his upper body. Um, I he's think grown again. Well, he's, 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 he's extremely strong. There could be. I see some potential problems because his lower base his because of the fusion in his back the he's got a swing with an upper rotation driven rather than lower uh, core driven and his foundation which is means his feet on the ground his ankle and his back have been compromised now he's going to have to manipulate it which he's doing with because he has this upper body swing and um you know he's going to have to fight that that causes flipping or 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 coming in late at the ball quite often, but uh, we're going to watch him do it. And I will never bet against Tiger Woods. I, <laughs> I, I, I won the bet. I said after this surgery that he would win a major and when everyone's saying there's no way, and I think he still can win a major. Well, uh, he didn't mind admitting that uh, whatever he's doing on the course, uh, such as play 72 holes when people wondered if he could, uh, or what he's doing, um, building or or designing courses, takes a back seat to the PGA Tour policy board and his seat on it. And let me be the skeptical reporter, because there can't be anything else in this in this discussion. It seems to me that since June, July, when uh, the merger that wasn't a merger, an agreement that wasn't an agreement. Uh, made headlines, and then there were all sorts of questions that weren't answered at uh, the Senate hearings in Washington. It seems to me that the only thing that has changed and has given hope that there will be something that will save golf is Tiger Woods' participation. And I get it, Dick, uh, and anybody else that would say, don't bet against Tiger Woods because you'll lose. But can he be the only reason for optimism here? 
Well, I don't think he's the only reason. I think he's a significant reason. Uh, I mean, keep in mind, the game's still got uh, Rory McIlroy. It does appear that John Rahm may be uh, jumping over to live. I think Lego probably has some inside information on that. He can update us. Uh, that will be a big blow to the PGA Tour. Um, uh, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I think that, you know, once the PGA Tour figures out and they're, they're looking elsewhere as well. They don't want to just negotiate with one player uh, uh, being being the uh, sovereign, the PIF. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to get, stack themselves in a position where they have options and bringing in private equity is one of them. There's some talks on how that, I mean, I think the PGA Tour is really in a challenging place for sustainability at the level of these purses are. I think I think that isn't sustainable, and we're going to have to wait and see what's going to flesh out of this whole business. I think you're right, though, Dave. I think, you know, the beautiful thing about this last week, is, as, uh, you know, Zoke alluded to, having Tiger Woods playing golf is a great thing. This might have been the first time I'd listened to a broadcast, followed up by listening to Brandel Chambly, where there wasn't conversation of, you know, ball rollback, piff, Saudi this it was all about Tiger It was finally about golf again they you know touched on the greatness of you know Scotty Scheffler's play right now the rejuvenation of Justin Thomas's game and you know as we know destruction often brings about you know futuristic better things and we're hopeful I'm hopeful and I'm sure Zoke is hopeful that this disruption that we're going through brings back something better for the game of golf. And that hopefully is Tiger Woods playing once a month and winning again. Do you think he's coming back because he knows the tour needs him? No, he's coming back because he's an animal. That's why he's, <laughs> <laughs> he, he lives and breathes. His identity is built around competing and winning and challenging himself. And he's been doing this his whole life with Navy SEAL training to if you watch the evolution of Tiger Woods' body from when he came out on tour to what he looks like now, this he's always challenging himself. And unfortunately, to the detriment of, I believe, you know, breaking down his body to, you know, to ultimately where he is today. So um, you can't avoid car crashes, but you can avoid a lot of the other things he's done to his body through physically challenging himself to make himself better. And that's where he's at now. He, he went through this, you know, four days, uh, challenged himself. He will address his weaknesses, obviously getting around the golf course and walking, how he addresses that from a physical standpoint. So the next time he comes out, you know, it's probably not going to be as severe as it was uh, this mm -hmm. time around. So, I mean, Tiger was just a competitive animal, and that's why he continues to play. Hey, hey Richard, um, Ian talked about the, the arduous nature of 72 holes, and those of us that are, you know, weekend golfers, uh, you know, we don't walk very much anymore. Um, can you explain what it's like uh, at the end of 72 holes to, to on your body and, and particularly in the heat that was that was this weekend and, and what you'd have to go through just even to get through the 72 holes on a regular basis? Well, yeah, sure. I can address that. The first of all, I mean, you're. You, People don't understand how tough your feet have to get in shape. You, you slap on a pair of foot joys and start playing, and I, you know. And if your feet aren't tough enough, you're going to have blisters on your toes, in, 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 and it's and you won't be able to walk. It's amazing how every year, you know, um, and Lego can speak to it as well. That that you know, like I went out a couple of years ago. I went to um, the Big Island to uh, work a little bit with Mike Weir. He invited me over to to help him out a little bit and i hadn't walked i haven't walked in 10 12 years a round of golf and i walked one round and my feet were blistered i was limping around just because of how tender my feet were and that's just one aspect of it now uh the stamina that you have to have because on occasion you have to play 36 holes in one day mm -hmm. your us open qualifying you're playing 36 holes in one day sometimes not very often but it does happen but stamina <clears throat> and the interesting thing with tiger too is he talked about he had a mental lapse in there where he found out when he was going through his shot routine he wasn't committed his mind was wandering that's a rust thing that was very interesting and he was honestly t talking about 
but he'll, as Lego was saying, he will address that. He sees that, that he didn't have that full commitment to the shot he was in. His mind was wandering. He was talking about that, you know, should I knock this down in the midst when he already pulled the trigger? Now we watched Tiger stop his swing in the middle of his backswing or his downswing. So that's an area where he is rusty and uh, we can be assured that he will address that and solve that problem uh, very quickly. Ankles, hips, or back, which is which is the toughest? Oh gosh, they're all the same. They're all they're all linked together. I think <laughs> back is the one that takes the most punishment. <clears throat> hips as well, and I think the the your your ankles uh, the least. <laughs>